I am a recreational diver, and I spend most of my free time doing underwater cave exploration. Nothing too deep or complex, but I usually go alone. Sometimes a friend of mine will come with me. We did some online research about cave diving and about new places that we could go to. We always wanted to be the first ones to discover a new place, but almost all cave systems are discovered already. But you never know, we could always accidentally find something new. One day my friend suggested to me that we enter an online forum, one that he found on the deep web. It was about diving in secret places. A forum for diving enthusiasts. It had information about secret locations that looked uncharted to the general public, but were all well known to government officials. I was curious, so I told my friend to share the link with me. And that same night, I was going to enter and see for myself what this was about. Night came, and I followed my friend's instructions. I clicked the link that he gave me, and there it was. The form he talked about. The name was The Farthest Abyss. I entered the chat and I could see four names in it. It was a general chat, so we could speak all to each other, so I decided to write something. I simply said hi. I heard we can get information about uncharted cave systems to dive in. I pressed enter and I waited. A few seconds passed, and a user called Nemo sends me a private message. No words, just coordinates. I wrote him back. What's in this place? He never replied back. I decided to search on my own. What those coordinates were. And as soon as I put them on a Google Maps, it showed a big forest area. It was such a dense place, I couldn't see the forest floor. I tried to find more information online, but nothing was coming up. I could only see that dense forest and nothing else. The next day came. I called my friend and told him about this. He told me that this location could possibly be an uncharted cave system, and that we should consider exploring it. I told him that we have no information about this place. It's in a dense forest area. And even if we think about this, we need to figure it out. How to bring all the equipment with us. How to enter the cave. My friend assures me that we can rent a couple ATVs with a grid behind in the nearest town. They can transport everything we need. I was curious and couldn't stop thinking about it. The place was only four hours drive away from my home, so I told him, okay, let's do this. We took off on a Friday, very early in the morning, to be able to arrive at the location around 10 a.m. The trip went smooth and we made good time. We rented the ATVs and parked my car in a public parking lot. We started now the second trip, through the woods and following my GPS device. We started approaching, but the forest was really dense and we couldn't find any more trails. But luckily we were really close. We could carry the equipment in two trips. We would bring the tanks and the gear in the first one, and then we would take the tent and food in the next. After doing the first trip, we arrived at the marked location and we could see a hole in the ground. It was behind some bushes, but it was there. We looked at it, and we smiled at each other. This was the place we couldn't see. We went back to get the rest of the gear, and came back. When everything was done and ready, we decided what the plan was going to be. What should be our approach? How long were we going to stay in the first dive? After deciding what we were going to do, we put on the suits, and we entered the cave. In the first dive, we could still see some of the cave ceiling. There was still some light entering, so we had some visibility. We also had our flashlights, obviously, to help us in deeper depths. The cave was enormous. It had a big chamber, and we could see almost any limit to it. It could be dangerous if we got lost in here, so we needed to be careful. My friend pointed down for us to go a little deeper, so we did. As we go lower, we couldn't see the bottom, or any walls on the side, and we were losing visibility. I told him to go up with me. It was time to evaluate the first dive. This place was just too big and we were risking getting lost out there. I started to climb to the surface. When I reached, I climbed out of the hole 
and waited for my friend. He was coming behind me, but after a few minutes, he still didn't show up. I was getting worried, very worried. This was not normal. He was just behind me. I waited five minutes, and he didn't appear, so I went back down. I started the descent, and I can't see a thing. I aim with my flashlight, but there's nothing. Where is my friend? I keep going down, desperately trying to find him in the abyss, like before. There's nothing around us. Just a big empty space. I stopped and shined my lights on all sides. I'm starting to lose hope of finding my friend. I know he still had some air left in the tank, but what if he got lost trying to reach the surface? There's no reference points here. It's just a big open space. As I point the flashlight everywhere, I manage to see a small entrance and a distant wall. My hopes go up again. I swam as fast as I could there to the small entrance. When I reached it, I shine the light inside and I can see a small path going deeper. So I entered it. As I move along the path, it starts getting narrower, more and more, to a point that I have trouble moving fast and I need to crawl my way in. But I have to. My friend must be here. And sure enough, I look ahead to see my friend. I crawl to him. And when I'm closer to him, he moves forward with a push and fast movement. I try to reach him, but every time I do, he pushes again. I start panicking now because the path is too narrow for me to keep advancing. But I do another push just when I'm about to give up. My friend just goes out of an exit. Thank God. I advance to it as well. When I finally leave the narrow path, I regain my composure and look around. And... And it can't be.